when I say raunchy, I'm talking raunchy, nice with what God is about to do. Yes. Uh -huh. For many, many years, I've yearned and ministered and preached and gone through a whole lot of stuff. You may be seated. And just wondering, when are you going to move, Lord? And, what is, and you, you see some things and you wonder. And you actually become somewhat bothered. But while you're bothered and become, I wouldn't use the word discombobulated, but while you're bothered and become, for a better lack of a better word, frustrated at time, you still put one foot behind the other, one foot before the other, and you keep moving. And even when you fall, you get up and you keep going. While all of this is happening, God is, I, I picture God as looking at this and said, okay, all right, mm -hmm, okay, get up again and go again. And he said, because of that, I'm going to do what you ask. I'm going to minister to you this morning from a book in the Bible that's, um, I've ministered from this book before, and um, this chapter, but from a different standpoint. I mean, we looked at this book a couple of years ago, and when you go through stuff and the devil keeps annoying you, and he keeps resisting you. Any one of you feel like you're being resisted, that you have such a desire to do something for God, and you just feel like something is just holding you back and resisting you? Ah, let me see your hand. You, you have such a deep desire in your heart and you feel like you're being resisted. Oh yes, oh yes. You feel like you know deep within your heart what you want to do. And you feel that there's just a force, an unseen force that's just resisting you. <laughs> I've felt that way many times. And in the book of Zechariah, there was a priest by the name of Joshua, the high priest. He can explain to you what that resistance feel like. Some resistance, God has to step in and look at the enemy or the devil that's resisting you and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And he's just back up off of it. Don't you like when God intervenes on your behalf? Oh, yes, oh, yes. You're guilty of sin. You caught, get caught with the goods in your hand, and the enemy says, look, 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 he's guilty. And the Lord says, shut up. I know, he's mine. Oh, <laughs> he rebuke you. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God that I'm not fighting my battle anymore. I just go where he leads me. Oh, and for many, many years, I felt that I was just being fought. And I know I was being fought spiritually. But from the day that I went in that long fast and God bust the door open and gave me my immigration green card and gave me a pardon and let me know that he's with it. And it took a long drawn out period and you felt that when well, Lord and you get frustrated and well I just got a call or get a letter from them they give me my day to come in and swear in to be a citizen. Amen. Hallelujah. All of that. <laughs> Give him praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy has fought on the Lord. When you get a pardon, I want you to understand, when you get a pardon from any authority on earth, like, uh, like the governor that gave me a pardon, something transpired in the spiritual realm, and that pardon is not just, to ex it's not just a pardon for that particular situation. It's a pardon for your entire life. Amen. So all that the enemy has held up on money and finances, brace yourself, it's coming. It's coming and it's going to come with such a rapidity and such fullness that, oh God, uh, the prophecies of the Lord of my life is about to be fulfilled and I'm, I've seen it. And uh, uh, You know when you, it's so close and it, you can, you can taste it. It's like baking cake and you walk inside, you walk inside, you come from the outside and as you come inside of the house, you can, some of the fragrances from the cake that are, are the bread that's baking, as you move towards the house, you can smell it. That's the way that I'm feeling now. That's, that's what I, I, I can, Kevin, I can taste it. 
I want to I, I wanted to say some things and just tell you that don't worry, it's gonna happen. It's gonna ha don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's gonna happen. <laughs> if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of um, Ze Zechariah, chapter four. Zechariah chapter four. Hey, Alfonso, how you doing, man? I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. God, I like it. Tell anybody who will tell you anything. <laughs> Shut up. My pastor like it and that's all that matters. Okay, that's it. I like it. I like it a lot. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know if I could be so bold. I probably do my white. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yes. <laughs> yes, the Lord is good. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Zechariah chapter 4. And we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 10. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm learning and I, I thank God for his mercy and what he's doing. He just continued to, don't go too far, son. Don't go too far. Go to you. Don't go too far. It's just, just, just what God is doing in your life, you know, and you just, you just sense it and I'm happy. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Soon uh, after next week, uh, after Friday, I won't de need these anymore. I'm going to see in 2020. So it, God is just fixing me up and hooking me up. So, I mean, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it, you know. Here begin at the reading of God's holy word. We're going to read it from Zechariah chapter 4, reading from verse 5 to verse 10. Here begin at the reading of God's holy word. Would you stand up on your feet for me and just read with us together? If you have it, just rest up on your feet. And if you don't have a Bible, you can share with someone or stand beside someone who have one and just share. Here begin at the reading of God's holy word. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shouting, crying, Grace! Grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord have host has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. The text, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the desire to minister your word. I thank you for the anointing which I ask for you, O oh God. I thank you for the anointing that makes preaching easy. I thank you for insight into your word. I thank you for sharpness of mind, precision of expression. Father, I thank you for pouring out your spirit upon this thy servant. And I thank you for hearing and answering my prayer this morning. Father, I give you praise for all that will be done or said in this place this day. Father, I pray that every spirit, I bind every spirit, every evil incantation. I take authority over every evil forces of darkness. Be bound in Jesus' name. Father, I loosen the Spirit of God to be relevant and to be prominent and to move freely through this house. Father, I invite you here. Spirit of the living God, come. Come, thou Spirit of the living God, and have your way. 
in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. amen. This book is Zechariah. It's one of the prophetic books that it's messianic in its in its uh, in its format or in its in its writing or in its saying messianic in the sense that it speaks about future the future glory and restoration of Israel and the future glory of the rebuilding of the temple and how God is going to rule the temple it's one of the three prophetic book or the, pre, the three prophetic of after the exile. You have Haggai, Malachi, and Zechariah, those three books. But this is one that I'm talking about, Zechariah, one of the three post-exilic books. Post meaning after the children of Israel came back from Babylon. A remnant was, they, they, they took them to Babylon under exile. And then, under Cyrus, he released some of them. And his command was, go back and build a house of God. The house that the Babylonians had burnt and torn down. So they released them and sent them back. And this prophet... Zechariah, when he came back, he came back with a certain amount of people, some of the, the, the Jews that were in exile. And he began, Zerubbabel, he began to build, rebuild the temple that was destroyed. Good to see you, young man. Build the temple that was destroyed. Uh-huh good. And they began to build a temple that was destroyed. And they had some oppositions around them. People who look at them and laugh at it. Sanballat and Tobiah and a few other people, they laughed at them for building what the, the first they began to build the walls. And it wasn't a lot of them that began to build, just a few. And they, were big, they used them as a laughing stock. And they said, what is this you're building? If a fox run upon it, it will just crumble. And they laughed them to scorn. <laughs> That's called, you despising the day of small things, small beginnings. God has a way of doing great things and mighty things with just a few people. Sometimes we are waiting for a packed out congregation and everyone giving their tithe and offering so you can get the money to do what you want to do, to build and do what you want to do. And <laughs> God sometimes said, I see your faithfulness and I see your idea, but this is not your house. It's mine. I bring you to build it. So I got to give you the money to build. Look to me. This particular prophet of God, Zechariah, the Bible said that while he was sleeping, he went to his bed and been sleeping, the Lord gave him a series of night visions. It's what we call dreams. <laughs> Your pastor is dreaming again too. Powerful dreams, but it's good. Thanks, baby. The Lord gave him a series of powerful dreams as it relates to the rebuilding and the, the temple and what's going to happen. In one of the dreams in Zechariah 1, he saw a rider on a red horse stand sitting on the horse under the myrtle tree. And he asked him what he represents and he told him. In the same book of Zechariah chapter 1, he saw also a set of some carpenters and they had horns. And he asked, what are these? And it, it's, 
he didn't just ask anyone because the Bible said that while he was having these dreams, there was an angel standing by him and took him and showed him these things. And he didn't understand what he was saying. So he asked the angel, what are these? And the angel said, don't you understand these? And he says, no, my Lord. The Lord has some spiritual messengers and that will show you things in your dreams. A couple of weeks ago, I've been speaking about dreams in the Bible study and how to interpret dreams and how to use the scriptures and interpret dreams. And a few of you who are in the Bible study, a few people on the Bible study, they gave me their dreams and I interpreted and tell them what it means. And some of them are coming to pass already. So you have the ability under the anointing to do these things. So the Bible tells you that this prophet of God asked the angel, what are these, what does these horns mean? A set of horns. And you know that horns, or the animal that has horns, you know that the animals use their horns to fight and to defend themselves. And the Bible tells you that the angel said to him, these two horns that you see are the horns that God sent throughout the land to scatter the children of Israel. The Babylonians and the Sumerians, Samaritans, they were people that God used, the Samaritans, that God used to scatter the Israelites. Some brought to Babylon and some brought to Syria. And then he told him, he says, in, 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 in Zechariah chapter 2, he showed him, he saw another man, and this one had a measuring line. Like, a, like, like um, what do you call it? a tape measure? You know, you're building, you use a tape. You saw with a tape measure, measuring. And he said to him, what are these? What does this mean? And he said to him, don't you know what this means? He says, no, my Lord. In other words, if you don't know, just admit that you don't know, and the Lord will show you. So the angel of the Lord tell him now, these angels, this, 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 this man, that, these carpenters that you see with the measuring line, they are sent forth by God to measure Jerusalem, which, of course, Jerusalem was now desolate and abandoned. And he's measuring it because you only measure things if you're going to build. Are you going to cut something or measure to expand? So he told him that these men that you see with the measuring line, they're actually measuring Jerusalem because although it's desolate now, Jerusalem again will be inhabited again. And then he got to a place in Zechariah 3 where he showed him Joshua the high priest. And Joshua the high priest was standing by the altar of incense. That means he was way in the holies of holies to offer sacrifice to God. And, you know, offer the sacrifice and to burn incense. Incense meaning praise, to send a praise to God. And he showed him Joshua the high priest, and he also showed him something else. He showed him Satan standing at the right hand of Joshua the high priest, opposing him. And he wasn't just, he, he, he was opposing him rightfully. He had the ability to oppose the high priest because, you see, Satan knows what you should look like or how you should function or how you should dress before you go before the house or before you go before God. You know that you should appear before God with a clean hands and a pure heart. And as a priest, you are to dress a certain way. So he showed him Joshua the high priest offering a praise to God, burning incense, and Satan standing at his right hand, opposing him, like, you're not supposed to do And he gave him the reason why. He said, he was accusing him, opposing him, and accusing him, and saying, look, look, he's not supposed to, because he had on filthy garment. Meaning that the robes or the garments, something like this, that you had on, it was filthy, it was dirty. But it went a little further, it was just not dirt. It seems as if the garment had excrement on it, filth, you know, poop, doo doo, poops, excrement on it. And you're not supposed to appear before God with soiled or messy stuff. And while he was opposing Joshua, he was saying that it, it, it 
give the, the scholars tell that is, is as if he was saying, you have no right to be, be offering this, this, this incense up unto God because you look at it, you're filthy, you're dirty. You have excrement in your garment. And while he was accusing him, it's as if they had an audience, it's as if the devil had an audience with God and God is looking at him and he's talking to God and he's opposing Joshua and he's saying to God, look, 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 look. He's praising him, but look, he's filthy. And then God stepped in and said, Satan, the Lord rebuked you. He says, if you're telling me something that I don't know, he's actually saying to him, shut up. I know that he has filthy garment. But while he's telling him, shut up, he went on and he said, Call some other angel and said, remove the filthy garment and close him. In other words, he's saying, I have the ability to take the filthy garment off. But before that, he said to him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Is not this a branch that's been plucked out of the fire? It means that whatever Joshua was doing got himself in trouble and he began to burn. And while he began to burn, God took him out of the fire. Oh, some of us have been through some stuff that you've been burnt. <laughs> burnt going out, burnt coming in, burnt rising up, burnt lying down. And God just got enough to just pluck you out of the fire and save you. So it says that God looked at the devil and said, leave him alone. Is not this a branch that was plucked out of the fire? Smell of smoke, but God took you out. Just turn to your neighbor and say, he got me out, he got me out, he got me out, he got me out. The Bible said that while he did that, he said he brought him over into the seventh vision in, 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 in Zechariah chapter 4. And he showed him a golden candlestick, candlestand like a menorah, and two olive trees. It's 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 you know, uh, the, the Jewish menorah, it's seven stand and one center. And the, the, it's like, you, you, anyone who know what a menorah is? And it's like he showed him the candlestick, the, the menorah with the candlestick, and it's burning, and the, the branches of it, and all is flowing out of it. Of course, if you are scholarly or if you do your research, you know that olive trees or olive branch reference to Israel. But if it's two of them, it refers to the Jews and the Gentile, meaning that the Jews and us. So he showed him two olive branches where oil was coming out of them. And if you look at Zechariah 4 verse 1, it says, And the angels that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. And in seven lamps, it is, is seven lamps therein and seven pipes to the seven, seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. And then it says, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side and the other on the left side. So I answered and spake unto the angel that talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? I don't understand. So he's asking him, what are these? And then... In verse 5 it says, And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. So he came and he asked him, What is these? And he explained to him, This is what you're going to tell Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the governor of Judah and he had given them access to come in to start rebuilding the walls and to do some other things and they were frustrated by the opposition that they were getting in in 2008 8808 they started a Bible study in our home after I had given back a building just given back the church to some people because they were doing corrupt and messed up things and I started a Bible study in my home. And it began to grow. And then the Lord said, go out and rent a place. And we have been to different places. We went to share from our home. Holy Spirit broke out and just man of God prophesied. And I ran with it. 
And we, we went to place on a rent from a little place, a little storefront at um, Concord Avenue. And when the Lord closed Concord Avenue, a really dilapidated building, but it served its purpose for the time. But I was faithful. The foundation of this church was laid in my home at a Bible study. And God began to expand. And we went to Concord Avenue. And the foundation was there also. We brought it. with was there. And when that door closed and the owner of the building died, and we moved over to Hekete School and the foundation was there. We, we, built, we went there also and it grew a little bit too. And then that door closed and we went to another place for a couple of two weeks and that door closed immediately. And then we moved again and one week we were out and then the Lord opened this door for us. And all through this, needless to say, your pastor was just frustrated. But I hold on to what God told me. I held on to the vision that God placed in my mind. And I held on to the promises that God made to me. Now we are here and we are facing some situation and I see the Lord just, it's like a knot that God was unraveling it, unraveling it and pulling it apart. And I went to my bed a couple of nights ago last week and I had a dream and I told it to my wife and we smile and we laugh and we prayed and we pray again and we kept asking and I went to my bed last night again and got another version of the dream and I prayed and I'm laughing and and I'm saying, Lord, what is it? And I'm trying to remember certain things and certain elements in the dream and what it is. And just trying to remember. And then the Lord, I got up and I'm trying to remember it. Because if I remember, it was sure that I remember it. I remember everything. And then I got into the living room and I sat down and I got my Bible and I flipped it open and it landed in Zachariah. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? Well, show me, Lord. And then the Lord brought me away and says, son, even though I show you what's to come, What's happening? And you see it unfolding. I show you a partial unfolding of what's to come. I don't have to let you remember the dream. Because it's not by your might that I'm going to do it. <laughs> so he says, then he answered and spake unto me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel saying, not by might. When you talk of might, you talk of the word for might is a word in Hebrew is C H A Y I L, Chayil in Hebrew, and it actually means strength, it means efficiency, it means wealth or army, ability, force of army. So the Lord is saying, It's not by your own wealth because you ain't got none. I got it though. He said, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, everything is mine. He said, this, you're not going to get it by an army of massive believers in here flooding the place. It's not by your might. Look, look I, I want to tell you, oh God, those things. He says, not by might. He says, strength, might is strength and ability. It's not, I'm not going to do it because, you have, because of your ability. You know, men are out there, they, they have ability and they can do some things and they can wheel and deal and go on the golf course and knock a ball and make big million and billion dollar deals on the golf course and because they got the money, they got the resource, they got the might. So when they do it, they say, I did this, I'm, uh, it's my money that did this. The Lord said, no, 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 not by might. So I believe the Lord was talking directly to me and he said, not by might. And I said, Lord, I'm going to share it with them this morning. I felt a peace in my spirit to share it. And the Lord said, not by might. Meaning your resource or your wealth. And then he went on and he says, not by, nor by power. The word for power is coach. K-O-A-C-H. Coach. It means strength. It means brute force, power, human strength. Or angelic strength. Animal strength. The brute beast of the ox or the ass. Not by power. You're not going to get it done by power. Not by your might, nor by your power. And then he went on and he says, but by my spirit, ruha, the Hebrew word for spirit, ruha, it means breath, it means wind. 
And anyone know that you want to get something done, baby, walk in the Spirit. Uh, let the Spirit lead you. For they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. You want to be Spirit-led. The Lord is saying, it's not by might, not by power, but by might. And it's not your Spirit, he said, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. And then he went on and he said something else again. He says, not just by my Spirit, he says, but by my Spirit, say it. The Lord of hosts. And that's where I got. When you talk about the Lord of hosts. Anywhere in your Bible you see the word. The Lord of hosts. It's talking about the armies of God. He says you're going to build it. And you're going to do it by my spirit. Say it, the Lord of hosts. The Lord is saying this is how you're going to do it. By my, not by your spirit. But by my spirit. Say it, the Lord of the armies. And when God tells you he's going to do something by his spirit and with his armies. Might as well you put your, don't put your hand behind you. Just begin to worship because you know that the Lord is the Lord of hosts. He has an army. He cannot be defeated. Never been defeated. Cannot be rival. Cannot be equal. None can stop him or say you can't do this. His armies are vast and infinite. Ah, he uses things that the ordinary man would never think of using, but he uses it because he's a, he's a Lord of hosts. Ah, when the children of Israel are coming out of Egypt, he used the locusts and he, he, he uses frogs and he uses murrain and lice and he uses, uh, he uses the, uh, he turned the water into blood. He's bloody, he's the army, he's, he's the God of the army, the Lord of hosts. When they get to the Red Sea, he says, I could use a fish, but I don't want to use it. I use a strong east wind. And the Bible said that it blew by a strong east wind all night. And the water parted. He's the God of the armies. Even the wind and the waves obey him. You ain't got to worry when you're in God's hand. Whatever is opposing you. Call on the God of the army. And the best way to do it is like worship and praise him. And then the Bible said he come down and inhabit the praise of his people. And when he come down, whatever is opposing you and preventing you from giving him praise, he's the God of the army. He knows how to vanquish that thing and get it out of his way. Because when you praise him, he said, hmm, it smells like perfume. And don't stop. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep worshiping and praising me. Oh, he's the God of the armies. Oh, hallelujah. As I begin to look at the text, when he says to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. It says, he didn't just stop there when he says the Lord of hosts. All of these things are happening in a night vision. And Zerubbabel is seeing this. But when he says the Lord of hosts, it seems as if he turned and he looked at the opposition that was coming against Zerubbabel. And he spoke to it. I love when God speaks to my problems. I love when God fights for me. I mean, I, 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 a couple of, in last month when I went to immigration day, guy wanted to give me a whole lot of problems. A little oriental guy and Chinese guy, he gave me a whole lot of sass. And he asked me some question, and I answered him truthfully. Some of the questions, some of the answers would get me in deep, big trouble. And I could see his face looking like, and he began to look. And, and my attorney tried to speak to him. And he, he said, oh, no, yeah, yeah, that's it. But I got to look into this. And, and my, um, my attorney said, I don't know nothing about that. And it seemed that like my attorney wanted to abandon me. And he looked at me. And, and the guy flipping the papers and as if he got, I got a bone. And I got to run with this one. But he didn't know he was messing with the God of the armies. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said your steps are ordered by the Lord. And the encounter of the God of the army says, even if you didn't want to give it to me, you have no recourse or no choice but to give me what I ask for. Because the Bible said, the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. And like the rivers of water, he turned it wherever he will. You got some things you want to turn, you want God to turn for you? Begin to call on the God of the armies. So he said to Zerubbabel, not by my, by my, my, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And then he got to verse 7 when he looked at him and he says, Who art thou, O great mountains? A mountain is, seems like you want to go to a place. 
and the, 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 the rightful things to do if you are, let's say you're building a road and you want to get from here to say over the other side of the Bronx and there's a big mountain in front of you. It will take years. You have to, you know, when they're cutting a road in Jamaica a couple of years ago, and, and the hill, it's in the mountain, and they want to go through the mountain. And instead of digging it down, it's going to take years. They get a stick of dynamite, and a couple of stick of dynamite, and they dig a hole and stick it, and they blew the mountain apart, and blew it, and they keep doing until it get right through the mountain. But the God of this army, he ain't, he ain't need no dynamite. He himself is a dynamite. He himself is a power. He says, not by might, not by power, but by spirit, said the Lord of hosts. And then he says, um, he began to question the obstacle in Zerubbabel's way. He says, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? I want you to grab that Bible up there. I want to, eat, that, 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 that big Bible, bring that for me. Find it, I want to show you how we read it in that one there. The, 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 give it to her. Find it for me. That's the NIV. The way in which the NIV describes it, is it under, uh, under it? Zechariah 4, the way in which he described it in the NIV, it belittles it. Make it look insignificant. In the King James Version, you, you got it, my dear? In the King James Version, it says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? In other words, you're opposing. Who are you? It's like God is questioning your issues. Who are you that's standing before this bald-headed preacher? Who are you that's standing before Carol Hamilton? I give him a church to build, and I need him to do something, and you're opposing him. Who are you? As if, who you think you are? <laughs> Read what it says in there. Look how he, 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 he describes it, what he says. What are you, almighty mountain? <laughs> in this case, he says, in this case, he says, who are you? In this case, in the, over there, he says, what are you? Who you think you are? He just asked him, read it again, read it again. What are you, O mighty mountain? Uh-huh. Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> level. And let me tell you something. God has the ability to flatten everything that's opposing you and make you go through. I don't need to get it this morning. Whatever. I'm here to tell you this morning that whatever is opposing you, God is on the march. And not only that, he has his army with him and he's about to flatten everything. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Just stand to your feet. Just stand up for me. Stand up quick. Stand up, stand up for me. Hallelujah. Just turn around and say, Lord, flatten it. Flatten it, Lord. Yes. Flat, flatten it, Lord. Flatten it. Oh, to, flatten it, Lord. Oh, oh, flatten it, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. It's opposing me. I don't got the financial acumen or the money to do what I got to do with it now. But, Lord, flatten it. Yes. Bring it down, Lord. Bring the bill. I can't. Lord, flatten it, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory oh. to God. I want you to notice something. It's not the river bell that's questioning the mountain. Look at the text. Amen. It's the Lord of the armies. Yes. Not only is he questioning the army, questioning the mountain, he says to it, what's going to happen to it? Yes, yes. Because he's the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the army, he has the power to say to your mountain, move. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I know in some part of the scripture it says, you have faith and you have faith and if you can say to this mountain, be thou cast into the sea and it shall be moved. But in this case, he's not telling you to exercise your faith. He himself is saying to the mountain, you shall become level ground. Amen. In other words, whatever is opposing you, the Lord said, I'm going to walk, I'm going to flatten it. So in a, when it's flat, you know when you climb up a mountain, it's hard. You're climbing, you're climbing, your feet tired. The Lord said, I'm going to make it so you, don't go to, go, you won't have to go through any mountains anymore. You're going to walk on level ground. Yes. Oh, which, I don't know who the, I think he's talking to me because I got some mountain and I see them coming down. I see them flattening. I'm going to swearing for my citizenship and I looked at the Lord and I said, is this coming? I, I don't just want the money to build because you can give me the money. You can make me a multi-millionaire many times over. All that you want to give me. I want that, but I don't want that alone. I I want the anointing. Amen. Some of you will settle and say, just give me the money, Lord. Just give me the money. But the money without the anointing will destroy you. 
the money with the anointing, the finances with the anointing will elevate you. And the more it elevates you, the more you should stay on your face before God and recognize he was the one that gave you the ability to do it. Because the Bible said in Deuteronomy 8, 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the ability to get wealth. Amen. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And I'm thinking, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. <coughs> I want you to know this thing. He says, for who he says him, he says to him, Who art thou a great mountain before the Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, which shout crying, Grace, grace, grace. If you look at it in the in the King James Version, read it what it says. In grace meaning God's unmerited favor. Grace, 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 grace. And the headstone, let me tell you what a headstone is. The capstone, it's called a capstone or a headstone. When you're building a building, especially a temple of God or a church or any big building, you would normally get a headstone, the main stone, a big stone, and that would be at the corner. And they would normally put the dates that the building erected and, 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 and the dates and the year when the building erected. And they would push that. And most, a lot of people at the time when they build, they put things like some part of the stone, a little bit hollowed out, a little part, and they'll put a prayer or put something in it, and they'll knock it into place. But the Lord is saying, you shall bring forth the headstone, meaning, meaning the, the cornerstone. And when you bring it forth, you're going to be bringing it forth saying, you're bringing it to put it in position. And you're bringing it and you're saying, grace, 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 meaning God's unmerited favor, God's unmerited favor, God's unmerited favor. Oh, yeah. But hear what's read in, 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 in the NIV. You shall bring forth the headstone. What is called a capstone. Read then it. he will bring out the capstone to uh -huh. shouts of God bless it. God bless God it. God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. You know that the Lord is with you when you can lift your hands and when God does something from you. He says, God bless it. God bless it. I know that the Lord is in here. Amen. I know that God told me to start this church. We have come up against too much opposition. We have come up against too much obstacles. But after a while, I want you to notice also when the Lord did it, when the land was at rest. You see, if the land is not at rest, if, 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 if the priest or the minister is not at rest, uh, you're worried about this and you're worried about that, then I can't do it for you. But I got to get to your papers and settle you so you can move freely. And know when, I, when I move you free, you, have to, you don't have to worry about that anymore. I got to settle you. So when I settle you, you can move freely. Go and come as you like. Well, as long as you want over there, go to the north. I want to put you in a position that when I said go to the east, you can go. Go to the east, you can go. When I said go preach in the west, you can go. Go overseas, you can go. Go back over the Dominican Republic, you can go. And without any hindrances. I got to put you in a place where you have rest on every side. All the mountain before you, you shall become a, a level ground. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When you, when you serve the Lord... We sometimes believe that we do things to gain God's favor. We begin to believe that when God blesses us, it's because of what we do. You do things and God blesses you because of your ability. Not only your ability, you believe that God blesses you because of your righteousness. And oftentimes we go to God with our own self-righteousness. And God is saying, it's, it's beautiful. Move that thing away from me. It's when you go to God in humility, in his righteousness, then he begins to move on your behalf. Because when you go to God in his righteousness, it's when you go to God and you begin to admit, Lord, I can't do it. I'm a mess. I'm wrecked. I'm screwed up. I, I think nasty. I act nasty. I function nasty. My whole life is a mess, Lord. What can you do with it? It's when you go to God with that kind of attitude. You're recognizing. You're saying, God, this is what this is what I am. Amen. And God has a way of taking things that are messed up and taking people that are screwed up and messed up, like Joshua the high priest, filthy garment, and but have a desire to worship God. Filthy garment, but still want to send up praise. Filth the garment, but find himself in the holies of holy. Filth the garment, but still giving God the glory. Filth the garment, not even conscious of what was going on. Filth the garment, but yet have a heart to praise the Lord. And that's all that God requires of you. Our desires to praise him. 
Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. The way in which you praise God is not because you feel that I have to do it and I've willed it to do I, I, I purpose in my heart to do it. Because the Bible said, it is he that worketh in you to will and to do his good pleasure, baby. I mean, you want to get to something. Let me, let me explain something to you. Do you honestly believe? Do you honestly believe in your righteous mind? That you are doing things of your own volition, you're being pushed. The Spirit of the Lord is pushing you. And many of us, we tried all kind of mess and all kind of things, and it, you find that I tried the drugs, I tried the woman, I tried the money, and you find that after all, you're searching, you're searching, and you find that it pacifies, but it doesn't satisfy. And God is saying, I know what you're searching for. I'm over here. Come over here, let me give you what you're searching for. Come over here, let me give you what you're searching for. Come over here, let me give you. And you, you go and you taste a little bit, and you say, it can't be this good. No, it can't be this real. And you run away and try something else, and it can't be compared to God. Amen. And he pushes you. And he pushes you. In the catechism, in the catechism number, question number seven, it asks a question. What are the decrees of God? What, you know, what are the decrees of God? What does God decree? What are the decrees of God? And the answer goes like this. The decrees of God are his eternal purpose. According to the counsel of his will, whereby for his own glory, he has foreordained whatsoever come to pass. In other words, he knows, he set it up, and he knows how to bring it to pass. Many of you believe that, oh, I'm serving God, and I'm doing it because I want to. No, you're doing it because he made you do it. You're coming after him because he wants you to come after him. He gives you a heart to seek him up because he gave you that heart. You can't do it by yourself. Because the Bible said, none can come to me except the Father. Give him the ability to come. Oh, hallelujah. And they that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. You are a gift from God to Jesus. And as long as the Father give you to Jesus, you can run so far and you can't go no more. After a while, you run up in a brick wall. He said, nope. You go that way, you nope. You can't go. You go that way and you get blocked every side. And until you come to God with your whole heart and say, Lord, oh God, I can't do it by myself. Simply to the cross I cling and you drop to your knees. Then God moves in and he saves you and delivers you. Well, baby, he can sit back and watch you run. And Zerubbabel is trying to watch you run all the day and beat your head up against the wall. Ah, and it's pacified, but it doesn't satisfy. And you find a, a deep hunger in you, you know, there got to be something more in life. I got to be, have, there's a meaning in life and I don't know what it is. I've been searching, but I can't find it. But there has to be something else in my life. There, I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know this is not all that life is. Oh, this, there got to be something more. And you're searching, and God said, I'm right here. Read Isaiah 14, verse 24 for me, my love. Quickly, 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 quickly. Isaiah 14, verse 24. Quickly. He says, Who art thou a mountain before the river? You shall become a plain. Isaiah 14, verse, yes, verse 24. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. Uh -huh. And as I have purposed, so, so shall, shall it stand. stand. So it's not you, baby. God already purposed that what I say is going to come to pass. Amen. I told this mountain, you're going to become a play. As a matter of fact, why are you opposing Zerubbabel? What, who, but what are you that you stand in the way of this man of God? Who are you? As a matter of fact, let me prophesy. I, I, and, and, and because I'm God, I purpose that this is what's going to happen. And my purpose will stand. It's going to happen. You're going to become a plane. Just say, beat it down, Lord. Beat it down. Beat it. Beat it. Beat it down. Beat it, down. beat it down, Lord. Bring it down to plane. Amen. Bring it to, 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 to a level ground. Look at Acts, 20, Acts 2 verse 23 quickly. Acts 2 verse 23. It's not by your own might. Not by your strength, but by my spirit, said the Lord of Gosu. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, mm -hmm. ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. 
Read it again. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Stop right there. Jesus Christ being delivered to the counsel by the, the, the foreknowledge. Determinate counsel Deter and foreknowledge. By the determinate counsel of God and the foreknowledge of God that delivered you. In other words, even the death of Jesus Christ, God planned it. He plans it so you can get saved, so he can die for your sins. You think, you think God just, oh, just kick it, put his son on the cross? No, no. He planned it. He had a plan. Yes. Because the Bible says if they had known, they would not have crucified the son of glory. If they had known what they were doing, they wouldn't have crucified him. If they had known that, when he, that he was going to raise from the dead for, for the third day, they wouldn't have crucified him. They would have said, it's future. It's futile. Oh, but they put their dirty, filthy hands and they took the Lord of glory and they said, We're going to crucify him and get rid of him. Working, miracle working, Jesus. We're going to put you, we're going to kill you. Uh, uh, water, water, turning water into wine, Jesus. We're going to kill you. Uh, we're going to get rid of you. Blind eye opening, Jesus. We're going to kill you. Oh, the leper cleansing, Jesus. We're going to kill you. Dead raising, Jesus. We're going to kill you. We don't want no more of you. But oh, had they known they would not have crucified the Son of Glory. Oh, because on the third day, the third day, the third day, he rose again from the dead and he kicked the stew out of death. He kicked the, he kicked the stew out of the dead and said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? And he bust out the grave and said, Oh, grave, where is your victory? You can't hold me down. Oh, you Hallelujah. crucified the Son of God. You did the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. He went on to Zerubbabel and he said, To Zerubbabel, he says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Turn to your neighbor and say, this house. This house. The hand of the Lord, the foundation of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. And then he says, his hand shall also finish it. Whatever you start, baby, I thank you, Lord, that you allow me to start it and you're going to see finish it. Whatever you started, you're going to, some of you have started some things and you wonder, hey, Sky, you'll finish it, son. You'll finish it. You'll finish it. You don't know how you're going to go to college. Oh, the, you, you, you have the seminary and, and money to pay for it. You keep doing what you're doing. God, has, God is in the background just working and fixing something. You, you, you ain't got to pay a dime. Turn up. Listen, start, I might stand up here for you. Stand up here for you. Just turn around and say, tell him, but I'm going to go, turn around and tell him, I'm going to go to seminary and I'm not going to pay a dime. Right. God will pay for it. And I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna come up with my diploma, my degree, because God is gonna pay for it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you don't need your money, you don't need your money, you don't need no money, you don't need no money, daddy. He's gonna do it, and when you, you're gonna say, you're gonna, look, how did that happen? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. For the Lord who laid the foundation, he's gonna finish it. That's right, that's right. God has a way of doing things. And I'll tell you why I love the way God does things. It would take a small little congregation like this. And give you a massive building with parking lots and everything. And the big sign and people see a few of us going there. And they say, and the flags are flying. And they wonder, how, 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 how did they get this? They, they can't afford a mortgage. And you look and say, it's paid for already. We don't owe a dime on it. How are you doing? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord of hosts is his name. He is the God of the armies. He don't need your help. You don't need to help him. He has all the resources that he needs. He said, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. He do it in the armies of heaven. Oh, la, 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 la. In Daniel 4.35, he says, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed to him as nothing. And he do it according to his will in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the, the, the earth. And none can stay his hands or say it unto him, what doest thou? You can't stop God. Who are you? You think you can stop the hand of God? Oh, you knock me down over here. God pop me up over there. Oh, man will oppose you over there. God break me out over there. You block me off over there. God hold me over there. Oh, you can't hold me, baby, because you can't. You try as you will, because you try as you will to block me in, but you can't stop me. As long as I'm praising the Lord and giving him glory, try all you will. You can't stop me. You lock me up over there. God bust me out over there. He Block me over there. He busts me out over there. Why? Because I'm moving in the spirit of the living God. And you can't hold spirit. Spirit, when God blows the wind, you can't hold the spirit of God, baby. And my life is hidden Christ in God. My life is hidden Christ in God. To get to me, 
you got to go to Jesus. And if you get to Jesus to get to me, you got to go to God. And you can't go to God to get to me, baby. So what I do, I move in the spirit and let the spirit of God guide me going out, coming in, rising up, lying down. And whatever mountain is in front of me, the Lord will move it to make it plain. Amen. Amen. I love what God is doing. Amen. And then he says, in verse 10, he says, for who has despised the day of small things? You look at the small things and the small beginning where we started from in our home. They might have despised it and said, they ain't going nowhere. I love when people do that. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to what do you think they can do? What do you think they can do? And God just exposed you. He hides you for a while. And then he prepares you. And after he prepares you, then he puts you up and says, hey. And they look and they double take and say, how did you get this? I ain't got to tell you, I didn't steal it. How did you come by this? You just said, the Lord. What I, can, what I can ask you to do is help me carry the headstone, the cornerstone, and you can cry with me grace. But if you're envious enough, I'm going to make you touch it. <laughs> because the Lord is saying, grace, 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 grace. Grace means God's unmerited favor. Yes, yes. God's unmerited favor meaning I don't deserve it, but he gives it to me. I know me. Wretched, messed up, screwed up. I don't know, deserve anything from God. And I was talking to the Lord recently and I said, Lord, I heard the Lord say, why should I give it to you? Why should I give you? Because of your goodness. I said, no, Lord. He said, why? I said, because I ask. And I could hear a simple spiritual chuckle. Like, like, like you know, yeah, I don't know if you, you will talk and walk with the Lord, you hear a little chuckle. I said, Lord, because I ask and I'm your son, he said, okay, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Not because of your goodness. Not because of your greatness, because you ain't got none. Not because of your goodness, because you ain't got none. There's none good, none righteous. But I'm giving it to you because I delight in you. And because you come to me, you just ask. I'm big enough and bad enough to ask him for it. And he's big enough and bad enough to give it to me. I laid the foundation and I'm going to finish it. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be around for a long time to watch it finish. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He turned and he says, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plumlet in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro the earth. To and fro the whole earth. Your seven eyes mean perfection. God is watching what you're doing. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is watching. He sees what you're doing. If you do good, he sees. If you do bad, he sees it. I want you to notice something here. Turn with me, baby, to look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 11, quickly. I'm almost finished. Ephesians 1 11. For those of you who believe that you're doing things and, oh, oh I, I, I'm doing it of my own volition and God is allowing me to do this and I, I, I better yet, I'm doing it because I want to do it. No, no, no. You, you can't even do anything unless God permits you to do it. Ephesians 1 verse 11, baby, read it. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, uh -huh. being predestinated according being what? Predestinated. Pre being, we, we, in, we, 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 we receive an inheritance because we, we, it was predestinated by God. Continue. According to the purpose of him. Uh, according to the purpose of him. Who worketh all things who, after the counsel of his own will. Who worketh all things after the counsel of your his, will. His own will. My will. His own will. Uh, that lady over there will. His own will. According to the counsel of his own will. Amen. God willed it. Amen. And he, I, 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 he, what he said, he says, according to the counsel after his own will, predestinate, meaning, you know what predestined is? Let me explain to you what predestined is. God in eternity past decided that I'm going to move, your mama is going to get with your daddy and they're going to have a son and I'm purpose for him to be a minister and at some point in life he's going to end up over here sitting on that chair with, by your mother. And you said, me? No way. Hell no. That's not going to happen. And God said, okay. Keep fighting. <laughs> I determined that that's what's going to happen. And he will kick you until you are sick. He kicked the stool out of you and all of a sudden you keep coming a little bit. And you keep coming a little bit. But he has predestined. He has, pre, he has predestined meaning he has already determined that this is going to be your destination. 
So everything that you're doing, work you towards getting to this place and getting to where God wants you to be. Right there. Because he does it after the counsel of his own will. He willed it to happen. You can't do anything about it. Let me explain to you another way it's like. You say, but why serve God then? You have no choice. He is the puppet master and he pulls your string, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you got some friends who want to pull your strings and they pull your string and take you to the wrong way God is a puppet master he pulls your string and you dance for him when he says sit you sit when he says move you move when he says turn you turn and every time you move and try to get away from the puppet master away from the string the string just choke you a little more it's too tight then you come under and say mm, I can't take that no more then you straight up and fly right turkey because God got you in his hand who oh, are thou great mountain before the rubber bell Whatever is opposing you this morning, I'm here to let you know God is about to bring it down, pull it down, pull it down, pull it way, way down. Amen. Turn to Isaiah 64, verse 8 for me, please. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Isaiah 64, verse 8. You think you're doing it of your own free will? God got a time clock on you. He's clicking. Isaiah 64, verse 8. Read for me. But now, O Lord, uh -huh. thou art our father. Uh -huh. We are the clay, uh -huh. and thou our potter. Oh. And we all are the work of thy hand. Uh -huh. So guess what you do? You don't see the clay going to the potter and say, what are you making? Leave me alone. You can't make me. No, 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 no. He is the potter. You are the clay. He takes a lump of clay, which is a lump of dirt, squeeze it, put some water in it, and squeeze it together, and blow into it the breath of life. I said, you are my piece of dirt. And when he says, you're my piece of dirt, that's what he did to man. That's what man is. He said, and God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into him the breath of life. He spoke and the earth come to pass and the, 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 the foundation of the world were formed. And he took the dirt and made man, blew into man the breath of life. So you're, you're, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm God's piece of dirt. You don't want to own it? Dirt you are and dirt you're going to return. You're God's piece of dirt and his breath is in you. And because you belong to God, he has a right to move and tell you where he's breath going to take you. You ain't got no power over God. You can't fight with God. Your hands are too short to box with God. He'll Hallelujah. knock you on your feet. Might as well you just give up and say, Lord, have your way. Might as well you say, not my will, but thy will be done. The more you fight, the more you get kicked. The more you fight, the more you get slapped. The more you kick up your strength and go on, the more he slap you down. Might, might as well you drop to your knees and say, Lord, help! I can't do it by myself. You're only going to frustrate yourself when you fight against God. Yeah, amen. It's a terrible thing to fight against the living God. Turn me, get me Romans chapter 9, 9, verse 19 to 21. Romans chapter 9. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I think this is the last scripture I give you. Quickly, quickly. Romans chapter 19. 19, 19. No, sorry, Romans chapter 9, sorry. Romans chapter 9, quickly. Re read from verse 19 to 21, slowly. Thou wilt say then unto me, uh -huh. Why doth he yet find fault? Mm -hmm. For who hath resisted his will? Uh -huh. Nay, but, O man, uh -huh. who art thou that repliest against God? Uh -huh. Shall the thing formed say to him that uh -huh. formed it, uh -huh. Why hast thou made me thus? Uh -huh. Hath not the potter power over the clay uh -huh. of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor uh -huh. and another unto dishonor? Uh -huh. The same potter who has the ability over the clay to make one vessel into a piss pot. Yes, the word piss is in the Bible. The pastor ain't cussing. The Bible says, you know, when I'm going to clean Jerusalem, not one of you going to lift up a piss it against the wall. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I don't know how you read these, read these little funny books and watch these funny TV, but if you read the Bible, you get a lot of jokes out of it. The Lord said, when I'm finished with you, when I'm finished with Jerusalem, the word of me, now one of them, them one of the men go leave to piss against the wall. So this, God has the ability to take one vessel and make it into a piss pot. And take from that same lump of clay that he break off and make the piss pot. And take that same lump of clay and make it a beautiful ceramic vase. And put it on a dresser and you admire the vase and say, oh, that's beautiful. But you disregard the value of the piss pot. But it's the same God that takes one vessel of honor 
and one vessel of right. dishonor. Amen. He's the same God. The clay don't say to the God, why are you making me a piss pot? Because I choose to make you a piss pot. You don't argue with me. I am God. I do what I want with what I want. I made the earth. It's mine. The Bible said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that lifted up his soul unto vanity, not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swore deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings of the Lord. And the Bible said, the Lord of hosts, he has purpose whatsoever come to pass. And the Bible said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The Bible said, we are the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. You can't fight God. You can't fight God. Yield to the calling of God. Most of us in our whole life, we are searching, looking for the right thing in the wrong place. Uh, the song that this guy sings in country western scenes is looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in too many places. Searching for pleasures. <laughs> You're looking for love in all the wrong places. Baby, come to the house of God. He loves you with an everlasting love. No one loves you like God loves you. He loves you enough to he numbers the hair in your head. The Bible said he numbers the hair in your head. Mean that when you comb it and one strong fall out, he adjusts the number. Didn't say he counted, he numbers it. I don't see my wife looking at my daughter's hair when she was small and combing her hair and counting the strong hair. <laughs> she loved her, but she didn't love her that much. I'm for that. She said, first we say, I ain't got time for that. Anybody got time for that? <laughs> Anybody got time for that? You, you, can you imagine you, you're combing your daughter's ear? You, 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 you comb one, and you comb two, and you, and you say, no, you don't get the brush and strip, strip that thing, tie it together. But God, God, God loves you more than that. God said, no, you're special to me. I know the number of hair you have on your head. So when you comb it on one strong fall out, I adjust that number. He says, oh, the sparrows, the sparrows, the sparrows. Me and my wife were walking yesterday and look at the sparrows, the sparrows, the sparrows. We look at the little birds and my, my wife says, can you imagine those little tiny things God made them? And we say, yes, baby. And he says, not one of them fall from the ground, yet he knows about them. He says, and, and then, then I said to my wife, I said, and the Bible said, you are more valuable than many sparrows. If God so close the birds of the air and the fowl of the field, if God so close the grass of the field and the fowl of the air, how much more would he take care of you? Oh, you have little faith. Little yes. faith worry. We don't worry, baby. We trust the Lord. Who oh, are thou, a great mountain before Carol Hamilton? You shall become a plane. God going to beat you down. Every opposition, I pull it down in the name of Jesus. Every opposition, in the name of Jesus, the Lord pull it down. In the name of Jesus. Every monetary obstacle, the Lord pull it down. Every monetary lack, the Lord pull it down. And I'm going to cry, grace, 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 grace. And the mortgage paid up. Grace, grace, grace. Not debt free. We are debt free. Don't owe nobody nothing. Come out of debt. Credit is soaring. Debt free. The Lord will pull it down. Stand to your feet. Yell enough this morning already. <laughs> Who are thou, great mountain? You're here. The only way to get to know this God is to try him. You are here this morning. You don't have a relationship with this God. And most time people come to God and they say, they say I don't want to come until I'm ready to serve him. And because when I go, I don't want to backslide. I want to go all in. Baby, you can't even go all in if you want to. All it needs for you to do is make the first steps. Just make the first step and say, Lord, I admit it that I'm a sinner and I need you. You're here this morning. You don't have a relationship with God. And you say, Pastor, I hear this sermon and I know I want to serve God, but I don't know how. Could you pray for me? If you're here, just raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Just, so I don't, just raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Doesn't matter who you are. Just say, pray for me. Pray for, I pray for you. Yes, I see the hand. Yes, anyone else? Just say, pray for me. Pray for me, Pastor. Just pray for me. Don't, don't, don't let me tell you something. Most of us, when we, in my country, they have a saying. They say, the man who needs, who has the raw meat, he go out and they look for the fire to cook it. Most of us are afraid, are timid to acknowledge God. I said, I want God. I need God in my life. Because we are concerned about what people think or what people say. Or if I do admit that I need God, when I do pray and come to God, and if I mess up, they're going to say, look, you mess up, you're not saved. No, 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 that's not for them to determine. All you need to do is go to God and say, Lord, 
I need your help. You're here this morning. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Raise your hand. Is there another hand? I see that hand. Yes, I see that hand. You need Jesus. Is there another hand? Is there another hand? You can't do it by yourself, baby. You can't do it by yourself. You can't believe me. You cannot do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Don't resist. The Bible said, now is the day of salvation. Don't resist him. Don't resist him. Don't resist him. You are here, baby. You are here. Don't resist him. Don't resist him. Lift for less. Live and just give your heart to God and let God work out the details for you. Don't try to work the details out yourself. You are destined to do greater things for God. You don't know how. You're stuck. You know you should be doing greater and better things. Let me get you a little, let get it work. You keep going through the same thing over and over and over again, going around the same circle. That's the definition of madness. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You try, you try the weed. You try the drugs, you try the woman. No, try Jesus. Is there another hand? I'm not going to beg anymore. Is there another hand? Is there a hand? All you can, it's not embarrassing. Just raise your hand and say, pray for me. That's it. That's all I need you to do. Okay. Pray this prayer with me. Open your mouth and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I confess you. I confess you. As my Lord. As my Lord. I believe in my heart. I believe. That you died on the cross. That you, on the that cross. you rose again from the dead. You rose again from the dead. For, my sins. for my sins. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You said in your word. You said in your word. If I confess you with my mouth. I confess you with my mouth. As my Lord. As my Lord. And believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That you're alive. That you're alive. I am saved. I am saved. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I've confessed you with my mouth. I confess you with my mouth. As my Lord. As my Lord. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you rose from the dead. And that you're alive. Therefore, Therefore, according to your word, to your word which, cannot which cannot lie, I am saved. I'm saved. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. You hear me when, when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me It's amazing I am a friend of God I am a friend of God I am a friend of God He called me friend I am a friend of God I am a friend of God I am a friend of God He called me friend This was going on. Zerubbabel was having a dream. God was showing him what is coming to pass. Didn't happen yet. But while he was having a dream, God was also conscious of the obstacle that he had in his way, the mountain. Zerubbabel didn't speak to that mountain. God was the one who intervened and he says, who are you? What are you a mountain? What, what, what is it? 
What is it that's opposing you? There comes a time in your life when you need, as a matter of fact, for me, I need him all the time. But for those of you who have been rebelling and running away from God, there come a time in your life when you need God to intervene and get your mountains to become flat, get your oppositions to come flat, get your habits, your filthy habits to get messed up and God change you and turn your life around. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know what I'm doing preaching the word of God. I shouldn't be preaching the word of God. I shouldn't be. I should have been locked up in jail or somewhere, strung out on drugs or messed up. What am I doing preaching the word of God? I was a pothead, smoking weed, looking like a fool, looking like a dummy, getting high until God said, no, 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 let me show you another high. Ain't no high like the most high. And over close to 30 years, the Lord delivered me from that stuff. Can't even stand the smell of it. Can't even stand the look of it. I mean, I mean, and God delivered me. Got me out of many things and set me free. Smell it, I feel like vomiting. God delivered me. I said, go preach my word. You know the fun thing about it? While I was doing it, while I was doing it, I used to go into the park. And while I'm in the park, I'm preaching the word in the park. I'm leading people to Jesus Christ. You, you explain that one. Doing something wrong, contrary to what God wants, but yet preaching the word of God. And after what? I mean, I mean, I lay hands on one woman in the park one day, Holy Spirit, liquor, liquor, move her. She start running. And I'm was spliffing one hand and preaching. You explain that. <laughs> Don't know, but I said, but God! That was my mountain. That was my mountain. <laughs> but God! That was my mountain. God said, I'm going I'm to clean you up. I, I, I started to clean you up. I ain't finished yet. Let me clean you up a little more. Let me get that stuff from you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Because it is he that, he that worketh in your boat to will and to do his good pleasure. Not you. Not your pleasure. There's some things you want to do and God said, no, you're going to do what I want you to do. Oh, hello, darling. You, hello, I, he loves you, baby. You're going to do what he wants you to do. <laughs> Keep kicking, cooking, kicking and screaming. You're going you're gonna to do it whether you want to or not. I mean, I mean, it, it, that's the kind of God he serves. He says, he never let you down. He's running after me. Running after you. Left the 99 and chase you. He keeps running after me. There's no lie he won't tear down. No wall, it won't kick down. He comes after you. So you don't want to come. You run a little longer. He, 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 he has a wall over there for you. And every running, running from God, he has a Jonah wait. He has a whale, a fish waiting for you. Oh, hallelujah. I thank the Lord. Amanda, could you raise the offering for me, darling? Just raise the tithe and the offering for me, sweetheart. Just read the tithe of the offering and let me pray. Give me a song, son. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God. Are you hurting and broken within? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Overwhelmed by the way of your sin. sin. Jesus is calling. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink? From the well, Jesus is calling. Welcome to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open by forgiveness, who was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. 
Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Father, in the name of Jesus, as you've been using him, Father, take him to the next level. Father, his mind is so amazing. The desires of his heart, Lord God. I want to say, grant it, Lord God. But if it's going to turn him from you, don't give it to him. Father, if he's going to use that platform to glorify you, Lord God, kick the doors down and give it to him, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you order his steps to be in the right place at the right time for divine appointment. Give him skills. Anoint these hands and give him skills. Par none. Skills, Lord God, to handle a ball, to, to handle some things, Lord God, that they've never seen before. Bring him before great men, Lord God, and speak your word in Jesus' name. Stabilize him, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Anchor him in your word. I speak even to his appetite for spiritual things. In Jesus' name. That will be enhanced in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I pray for you? Come. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the Amen. precious Jesus blood of Jesus Father, Christ. Oh, I lay hands on this young man, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, every obstacle in his life, every hindrance in his life, pull it down. Everything that will hinder his life from moving forward, every obstacle, pull it down, Lord God, and trust him forward. Father, I ask, Lord God, in the hands, whatever they handle, Lord God, if it's not like you, destroy them, destroy the thing that is destroying his life. But Father, I ask you to kick the door down and give him access. Turn his entire life around, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Make every crooked way straight. Father, bless the works of his hands. Cause it to prosper. Bring him before good men, Lord God, who will look at him as his skills. Father, enhance their skills, Lord God. And give him your, give him his, let your presence be over him. Let the angel of God encamp around him. And I decree even now this day, a fiery edge of protection around him. A fiery edge of the Lord around him to protect him from danger. Seen and unseen. And I decree no weapon that is formed against him prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I speak even to his temper. Easily provokes a time. Father, in the name of Jesus, calm his spirit, Lord God. Change his spirit, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, give him a calm spirit, Lord God. And in his appetite, Lord God. Lord Fill him up, Lord God. Give him a calm spirit, the hopes of God, they that do hunger and thirst of the right shall be filled. And as you come to your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Young man, come here. First time you've been here, right? This is yours. Everyone that come in my house has come into the house of God to get a brand new Bible. This one is yours. It's yours. I'll sign it for you in a little while. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This decision that Brother Patrick is pondering over, Lord God. The decision that he has to make. How he goes about it, what to do. Father, the people that he has to meet. Father, in the name of Jesus, give him favor. I speak even to his immigration situation, Lord. Give him favor, unconditional and uncommon favor. Every obstacle, every mountain be brought down as a plane in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in the nighttime, speak to him. Show him what you have for him, Lord. Not because of his ability. Not because of his astuteness or his wisdom. But because of your love for him in the name of Jesus. The things that he so desires to do for his family, Lord God. And lack certain resources, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your favor be upon him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands for the blessing. Lift your hands for the blessings. Lift your hands for the blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord who pull mountains down and make mountains become a plain. May he cause every obstacle in your way to become a plain and give you free access. Financial access. I call for money. Come in the name of Jesus from the north, the south, the east, and the west. The Lord revealed to you in the name of Jesus where the resources are. And lead you to go to it. And may they open it and give it to you willfully. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.